Hey, I'm Laila. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to look at everything watercolor pencils. So, we will do watercolor pencil swatches. We will also look at comparison between watercolor pencils, artist grade, expensive types, and student grade, more cheaper, more affordable. We will also look at the difference between watercolor and watercolor pastels. You will also get to see some of the techniques that you can create with these pencils. And at the end of the video, I will show you a follow along tutorial and I will show you how to employ all of the techniques that I showed you during the first part of the tutorial. For those of you who are specifically interested in one of those topics, make sure to check out timestamps that I will place under the video. That way you'll be able to go straight into the information that you need. Otherwise, I would suggest to watch the whole thing through. That way you'll be able to learn, relax a little bit, and hopefully make a decision whether you want to get some watercolor pencils or not. So, do you really need watercolor pencils? Can you use watercolor pencils instead of watercolor? Or can you use watercolor instead of watercolor pencils? I get asked this a lot. So, let's finally look at this question and decide what we think. Let's have a look at differences between watercolor and watercolor pencils. Of course, you can already see that it's a very different packaging. So with watercolor, you have a palette and when you take them with you, you need to make sure that everything's packaged up properly. You're not going to have any leaks or anything like that. When you have watercolor pencils and you want to take them with you to transport them from A to B, all you need to do is to make sure that they're not going to be dropped. So that way you will not break the leads inside these pencils. Next thing, when you are working with watercolor, you can use you can use larger brushes and larger paper. and apply your paint on very large surfaces, surfaces. It will be a little bit harder to do with watercolor pencils because they are quite small. And if I was working on a large painting, you can imagine how long it will take me to work with watercolor pencils. But there's also another difference. When you have worked with your watercolor pencils and then applied water and turned it into watercolor paint, after it's dried, you will not be able to remove it from your paper. It's pretty much permanent. Whereas with watercolor, you can add water and it will run again. Of course, depending on the pigment and depending on the print, you might have harder time removing it from the paper or not removing it, but it's not permanent. Every time you add water, it will run again. Not with watercolor pencils. You can rework them while it's wet, but you cannot remove it when it's dry. So, if you would like to know more about how you can use watercolor, I already have videos for it on YouTube. So please have a look in the car in the uh, video cards just in the corner there, and I will link some watercolor tutorials so you can have a look. Let's have a look at how we can use watercolor pencils. So. Number one, 
you can use them dry just like any color pencil number two you can use it dry and then apply water and turn it into paint number three You can apply water on the paper and then use it over the damp paper. Number four, you can apply water And you can get a um, watercolor pencil apply some of the shavings and see it run and create beautiful texture can be wonderful for background or perhaps some other textures that you might find this very useful for. So these are the main uses for watercolor pencils. Another really good use for them is if you are using both, you can use your watercolor pencils for outlines and when you start to work with your watercolor you will be able to completely dissolve your watercolor pencils and so you will not be able to see your lead pencil or your graphite pencil lines underneath that is if you want to get rid of the uh, pencil lines in your watercolor painting now let's have a look at some similarities between watercolor and watercolor pencils just like watercolor You can blend colors together. You can do the same thing with watercolor pencils. this is what you get if you are enjoying this video I would also like to remind you that I have a patreon page on that page you can not only support me so that I can create more videos for you here on YouTube but also you'll get to see the extra videos that are not available here on YouTube you will also get to request videos as well as ask me questions go into the drawer depending on which tier you choose where you might win some of the sketches and artworks that i create here for you on youtube during the follow along videos so please check it out it's a very small community over there at the moment it's almost like a little personal private club so I look forward to seeing you there. Another similarity between watercolor paint and watercolor pencils is that both of these media come in student grade and artist grade. Different companies that pr produce one and the other create cheaper versions and more expensive versions. So. I will not go into watercolor paint in depth in this video because this is a watercolor pencil video. But in this video, 
I would like to look at watercolor pencils and compare student grade to artist grade. Now, watercolor pencils that you see here are Faber-Castell pencils. These are artist grade ones, so Durer pencils. I think they also do a student grade, but I don't have any at the moment, so I'm going to use these for artist grade. And I'm going to use these pencils for student grade. So these are Creta Color. I think these guys are Austrian brand and they produce a lot of pencils and pastels and things like that. So um, let's have a look at the difference between these two, if there is any really. So number one difference is the price. These pencils are much, much cheaper than these ones. Quality of the wood, for example, you know, the wooden casing is different too. So these ones are made from cedar wood. Not sure what these ones are made from. Um, you can see that the lead thickness is thicker in this one than in this one, which means you actually get more material and also it's easier to work when you're working on the angle and want to cover a larger area. Also weight-wise, these are heavier pencils than these ones. Now, these two particular brands, both of them have ribbed pencils, which means once you place them, it's harder for them to roll away compared to the round pencils. Um, also, if you look at, for example, quality, where you look at the um, here, I don't know what color this is, I just know the brand, that's it, there's nothing there to tell me. But here I have name of the color, white. I also have the number, so that if I want to buy extra pencils, it'll make it easier. I also have these stars here. Now these stars are telling me how the quality of the um, pigment in there. And because they use real pigments compared to, say, for example, dyes and cheaper, um, brands or even not necessarily a brand but a grade of the pencil is cheaper then you will not going to have a real pigment in there so that way I know exactly how light fast it is so if you're just trying things out if you're a student I would suggest go for the cheaper option try this out maybe you will love it and then you can uh, save up and invest into um, a set of professional ones maybe you're not going to like it and then you just wasted i don't know 10 bucks on this another thing is that um at least with this brand the faber castell they use same pigments in the color of the pencils so the color that you see on the outside of the pencil is the color that is going to be when you're actually working with it but with other pencils not necessarily I mean, of course, it gives you an indication of the color, but it doesn't mean that this is exactly what you're going to get inside. So now, let's have a look. I will use a couple of darker shaded um, pencils. So this is a um, student grade pencil. It's a bit thinner as well when, when I hold it. And I will go for a similar color. It's not necessarily an equivalent, but it's a similar shade in the more. Expensive one. I think this is more brown. Okay, let's have a look. You can achieve quite a nice deep color, but I'm having trouble washing these lines out completely. That's it, I think that's the, as much as I can go. Now let's do the same test here. The lines are pretty much completely gone. All I can see is just the texture of the paper. 
So that's the student grade. That's the artist grade. Let's have a look how well they blend together. Student grade. Just great. That's a nice transition. This is a nice transition and it happened much quicker as well. So obviously it takes less brush work to soften the pigment and turn it into paint. Now, let's have a look at how strong the pigment is. So for that, I will take two oranges. So these are pretty close, at least when you look at the packaging of these pencils. So this is the artist um, grade. And I'm pretty much blocking everything in as much as I can and I'll do the same thing with the art with the student grade. Now let's do a comparison. That's the intensity of the student pencil. That's the intensity of the artist pencil. Now you can see that the color itself is a little bit different. This is a bit more red and this is a bit more yellow. But if you look at the um, color payoff that you can achieve with the student one and with the artist one, I would definitely like to work with artist ones over the student ones. But having said that, if you are trying things out, if you just want to learn, if you've never used this material before and you just want to see what is it about, how do I use it, am I going to like it or is this something I'm just going to get rid of straight away, then I suggest um, to get a cheaper student grade and then once you really like it and you want to produce artworks that you want to keep for a long time, then I suggest to get an artist grade. You can see how the student grade, the price difference is humongous, but you can still get very nice rich colors. I have to remind you though that these pencils, they don't even have um, color fast markings on them, which means that once this goes under the light, you only have maybe, I don't know, a few weeks before it fades away. Uh, with these ones, most of them have um, the color fastness marking so the more stars you have the more color fast they are so you know which colors you can rely on and which ones you can't and it's up to you how you can buy them now that brings me to my next point okay so if you would like to go for a pack of watercolor pencils and you decide that you want to give it a go but you want to go for the student grade first then i suggest that you buy it as a pack. They usually come in packs of 12, 24, or 36, you know, that sort of a ratio. Um, you can get really nice colors, like this is a um, crater color, and I'll just give you a few swatches just of these random colors that you can get. It's really lovely. I use this with my students, and they love it. I've done this one, so it's Now let's add a little bit of water and see what they look like. So that's a lovely sort of a spring green. That's a deeper one. Oh, that's a lovely, really strong purple, this one. Cool red. Yellow. Ochre. 
So see, you can get lots of lovely colors. These are not all of them. These are just a um, few um, colors. If you would like to see a video on swatching um, all of these colors, then I will put um, a video like that on my Patreon. So you can always go there, support me creating more videos for you, and I find a lot of useful information for yourself as well with more videos, relaxing follow-alongs and so on. Now we figure out this. Now let's look at the variety that you can get with the artist grade. When it comes to artist grade pencils, you will get an incredible uh, shade range, color range. And that is of course because artists working with them so they might be very precise about specific colors or very picky. And um, what do you want to do? You can buy pre-made sets, so sets of 12, 24, 36 colors and so on. Um, in uh, Faber-Castell they go up to huge sets, like incredibly huge sets, absolutely luxurious, you know, with the most amazing present probably you can give someone who loves working with color and pencils. Um, but in my situation, because I bought these pencils at different stages for different projects, I didn't want to buy a whole set because I already had few pencils and I thought I'd just get repeats and so on. So I bought them just separately, one by one. And so what I did is I've made my own little box here with my own little trays out of um, corrugated um, paper, corrugated cardboard very useful very handy so let's have a look at how these pencils swatch so I'm going to do a chart and show you all of the color pencils by Faber Castle in my collection So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write all the names of the colors and then we'll be able to test them out. Terracotta. And one more thing I would like to say is that if um, you are creating your final works that you want to sell or whatever, then you can always choose colors with more stars. Um, for me, it's usually my practice works, so it's not as important. Um, but still, most of the colors that I choose um, should have at least two stars and more. The weather is being so bad today. I can actually hear the wind blowing through the cracks of the house. So this what this color is called Bistra. Sounds a lot like word Bistra, which means in Russian fast. So <laughs> that's really funny how how it works together. So here I'm just leaving it dry. To see the difference about between this is what it looks like dry and this is what it looks like when it's um, when it was turned into a wash. So 
So next color is raw amber. It's a very intense color, this one. Very beautiful. Terracotta. Burnt Oka. This is light yellow ochre. The beauty of choosing your own colors is that you can make your own palette. So for example, you might like a lot of earth tones for your work or you might prefer a lot of really bright sort of blues and reds. Um, the downside of picking your own colors is that you don't get a box. But I just love re re reusing and recycling old things. So that color was cadmium yellow and now it's orange glaze. This is one of not many colors. I think I only have two colors that only have one star. But I love them so much. They're so beautiful and bright that I just didn't want to say no to them. <laughs> so this is orange glaze. Water it down. And that's what I mean. It's such a beautiful bright color. I just couldn't resist it. So this is pale geranium lake. I love this. This is just so gorgeous. When I look at this color, it makes me want to paint flowers. You know, if there's a color that inspires you, you should definitely have it in your palette. This is scarlet red. And this is Indian red. Now we're going into cooler versions of red. So this is um, Meda, Kraplak Meda. And um, in Russia, we also call this color Kraplak, so perhaps it's a German word or because it's definitely not Russian, but we we'll use it. It's pretty much known as the perfect berry color. I love it too. So this is middle purple pink. And this one is fuchsia. Now oh, it's so lovely too. Makes me think of beautiful roses. Let's have a look. So this color is light magenta. It's quite a light color, this one. This one is called beige red, which is pretty much like what you would say a classic sort of skin tone, lighter skin tone. White. Yeah, you can see how it covers the black, but once you 
go over it with what? With water? It sort of disappears. Okay, so light ultramarine. It's like a really soft sort of a sky color. And here I've got move. I even need to wash it off, otherwise I won't be able to see the words. Wow, it's so dense. Beautiful color. Really beautiful. Do you guys have favorite colors? Under the video, in the comments, write your favorite color. I might be able to guess your personality or your mood, depending on that. Let's have a look. Okay, so this one is dark indigo. I think, yeah, that's it. And next is a uh, helio blue reddish. Look how gorgeous this blue is. Wow. Also very intense. I have to actually move it away from the letters, otherwise I'm blocking all of my writing. Very intense colors. So this is bluish turquoise. I really like um, turquoise range of colors always remind me of summer and in a really nice sort of a warm way cobalt green that's another favorite of mine okay now this color was a light cobalt turquoise and the other color I'll have to put a an arrow, I must have mixed them up when I was writing and so this would be cobalt green oh how lovely okay so this is fellow green light And light green. And now dark warm warmish green, which is leaf green. Again, I've done the same thing. I've mixed up the colors. Now, there are a couple of more pencils that I have in my palette that are not from the Faber-Castell family. So, this pencil here. Now, if you have ever thought of a magic pencil, this is the thing that comes as close to it as possible. Um, now, this pencil is a watercolor pencil that writes on paper, glass, plastic and metal and um, if you are a craft person who likes to draw on things like this for example on plastic on anything else then this is this is really you need to get this I think they're sold one by one I haven't seen them sold in packs they're reasonably expensive but they're absolutely beautiful See? That happens. So you can, if you work with tiles, like if you work with mosaic or anything like this, these pencils are perfect. And yet you can just get a damp cloth and completely remove it. It's gone. So you can do the same thing on cups, on, on terracotta, on, you know, as I said, metal, plastic. And this is um, what you can get out of it on paper. Ooh. That's a good actually tip. Don't press too hard on them because they do break. And then when you add water, you get the most intense black shade. 
for that you can get out of a watercolor pencil so that's why I use this one in my set I, um, Faber Castell um, you know their Dura range is really really it's the black is really really good but I got this before I got some of the you know I've decided to to fill up my um, watercolor a sort of a set so I already have that one so I didn't want to get another one because of that but um, you can really you know as I said it's not just a watercolor pencil it's a, a magical watercolor pencil okay and I have this pencil here as well now this pencil is called um, sketch and wash and when you draw with it it looks like your regular graphite pencil you know it sort of has that sort of a shimmer to it I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not but it's just like your typical um, pencil but if you add water to it it runs so you can use it with watercolor paint as well I still prefer to use watercolor pencils if I want to get rid of lines than that pencil first of all because you can see it will it will mark the colors up for example if I'm working on the pink rose you know I've got this and then I've got pink it's gonna make it gray pink but instead I can just use a pink watercolor pencil and then have it completely merge into the watercolor paint so the so you can see that that's the reason why I keep my homemade kit is because I've got different kind of watercolor pencils and I keep them all together now if you work a lot with watercolor pencils then as I said before I suggest that you get a really nice big um, uh, box of them what I will also do is I will try and find some links for you guys and put them under the video so you can have a look if this is something that you might like to get okay so in the end this is the um, color chart that I ended up having with all of these pencils remember this is not any particular set these are just my choices for some of the projects that I did before and some of the new ones that I got now so let's have a look what it's like when we actually start working with them now here I have a 300 grams hot pressed watercolor paper so it's reasonably thick but it's quite smooth as well and I do find that it works really well with you know watercolor pencils on cold pressed rougher textured paper and hot pressed but because today I wanted to do a flower I thought that it'll be quite nice if I show it to you on the hot press okay so to start with I am going to use a very light color to sketch the composition out because I'm not going to use my graphite pencil I will be able to get rid of all the lines I have lots of different videos on how to structure things so if you're interested there are a few you can watch probably can't see things really well now but you will be able to once I start to go a bit harder so this is an iris okay so my overall sketch is done um, and what I will do now is I will start really softly um, sort of giving it a little bit more shade and color so first I'm going to work dry and then I'm going to add some water to bring it all to life We start with the lighter colors and then we can build it up stronger and stronger.
This paper is extra smooth. Now, this is the time when you don't want to use the brush that's going to hold too much water because you want to be able to control where your water is going. So I'm using this brush. It's, it's quite good, but it doesn't hold too much water. And this is exactly what I need for this. And you see, as I'm, the reason why I don't want too much water is because there are some areas where, that, where I might not want for the pencils to be completely um, diluted. So this is my first layer of um, pencils that I am using with water. When this sets a little bit, I will be able to apply my next layer uh, and create more detail. Another really good use for watercolor pencils is to take them with you to sketch on the spot and then when you get back to, into your house or your studio, whatever, you can use water and um, add your touches in a more sort of a relaxed atmosphere. That can be another good um, use for them, I suppose. So this is dry. Now I'm going to go back for for more of middle purple pink, this color. And now, not only can I create just give it color, but I can create that pencil drawing texture. Um, as well. That's the cool thing, you know, when it comes to choosing what's better, watercolor or watercolor pencils, you definitely, this is the one thing that you don't get with watercolor.
Okay, so now this is fuchsia. It's a little bit warmer than the previous color I was using. Okay, so this is my second layer and I'm going to go over it again with a little bit of water, like I did the first time around. I'm going to introduce a little bit of this um, light ultramarine just on the edges and add a little bit of water to that too and a little bit of orange and that's what you just keep doing you just keep building those layers up um, adding more color through and so on And now I'm going to use black Adding a little bit of white to soften the colors
Okay, now I am going to add a little bit of water around. And shave a little bit of spray a little bit of water to make these little bits run even more Um, I hope this was a very good demonstration and it will help you to make up your mind whether you would like to work with um, uh, watercolor pencils or whether you stick to just normal pencils or maybe you would like to work with watercolor instead but whatever it is I hope it um, helped you to make up your mind Okay, I probably better stop fiddling with it now. <laughs> I hope you liked this video. I hope it gave you some extra information that you might have been wondering about. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and press on the notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever my new videos come out. Also, I would like to say a big, big, huge thank you to all my patrons who are supporting me there on Patreon. And for those of you who are not there, don't forget to check it out. I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely day. And as always, thank you for drawing with me.